Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Stock Break with me, Josh Gilbert. Today, we're going to be analyzing NVIDIA, a stock that has leaped into the limelight following years of development in the world of AI. Earnings grew by more than 500% in the fiscal year of 2024, and therefore NVIDIA has proven itself to be magnificent. It has moved up to the third largest stock on the S&P 500. So we're here to tell you what's next and run you through the fundamentals of this business. But before we get started, if there's anything you ever want covered across these stocks, please let us know. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and give us a rating and send this to one of your friends who may be in interested in investing in NVIDIA. If you're listening to this in podcast format and would like to watch along with the presentation, there is a link in the bio and you can head over to YouTube to watch along with the beautiful presentation that I have created. Uh, and just a quick reminder that this presentation is for educational purposes only and should not be taken as investment advice, personal recommendation or an offer of or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instruments. So on to NVIDIA. Uh, it's been an unbelievable few years for NVIDIA shareholders as the company continues to deliver huge numbers. The business is arguably the golden child of AI, leading all other businesses in this field and showing that AI isn't a passing fad. But it is a re revolutionary technology that is continuing to make NVIDIA some serious cash. Shares have soared by more than 1,900% in the last five years, and they're up 78% alone in 2024. So can this continue? Well, that's the big question. So today we're going to take you through the full view of NVIDIA, its story, their fundamentals, and their potential valuation. So we'll take it back a little bit. We're going to give you some key history and a bit of facts about the business. Uh, it was founded in 1993 by Jensen Huang, uh, Chris Malakwaxi, and C Curtis Prem. Um, Jensen Huang is still the CEO today. So a very, very long reign for him. And again, this is his baby. Um, in January 1999, NVIDIA went public at $12 a share. And shares actually jumped by 64% on the first day of trading. That same year, in NVIDIA invented the GPU, the graphics processing unit, which actually went on to reshape the computer industry. Um, and then it began laying the groundwork for artificial intelligence as early as about sort of 2009. So again, really, really early on, um, this business had, had sort of started to, to sort of lay the groundwork in AI and, and sort of continues to be the dominant name now. Um, it has more than 40,000 companies using its AI technologies. So again, just shows why they are at the sort of the top of uh, AI at the moment and why they continue to, to sort of lead. Uh, before sort of AI really, um, NVIDIA was known for gaming very well. Uh, the original Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 used NVIDIA GPUs. And just recently it had an unsuccessful takeover for arm holdings uh, back in 2022 due to regulatory scrutiny. And that's quite important to know because arm has sort of gone on to be a business that has sort of exceeded very well as a, as a public company. Um, and uh, we'll touch a little bit on um, sort of acquisitions as we move through the episode. Uh, what is their mission and vision? Well, NVIDIA's mission statement is to advance digital experiences through the relentless pursuit of visual, visual computing innovation. Their vision is to be the world leader in visual computing technologies and the first choice of professionals in creating and experience the most natural, interactive, and visually compelling computing experiences. So they have big, big goals, big visions, uh, but the mission is, is simple. They want to be the leader uh, in computing innovation. So a quick look now, back now to the business timeline. We went over some history and some facts there. Um, I mentioned its IPO. They listed on the New York Stock Exchange in 1999, and they invented the GPU that same year. Uh, I mentioned about acquisitions. We spoke about ARM earlier. Um, NVIDIA actually made some key acquisitions between its IPO and 2004, but a big deal came in 2004 when they agreed the deal with Sony to supply the GPUs for the PlayStation 3. So again, that was a real moment for NVIDIA and for the gaming unit of the business in 2008 shares slumped from eight dollars to two dollars a share 
But at the time, the business was actually named the company of the year by Forbes. So it's not been plain sailing, uh, you know, as an NVIDIA shareholder, you know, from day dot to where we are now. There's been some sort of rocky periods. Uh, by 2012, uh, the business had seen little growth with shares hitting $3, but it began to lay the foundations for future growth uh, with the LexNet Neural Network, which is what we know as the modern day AI. In 2016, shares tripled in value with impressive growth across all its major business segments, including gaming, data center, and automotive. Then in 2017, shares doubled again as the crypto boom saw demand for its units when mining crypto assets. Two years later, it reinvented computer graphics with the RTX uh, card, and that led shares higher uh, again. And then as we know, or as you may know, in 2022, AI continued to gain traction with NVIDIA becoming arguably the poster child of AI and shares rose dramatically in 2023, becoming the best performer on the S&P 500 for that year. So now we're going to get a little bit deeper into the fundamentals of NVIDIA's business to tell you how they are really making this money. So over the years, NVIDIA's key revenue segments have changed. I mentioned that a little bit earlier. Um, but as of today, the main revenue driver is their data center business, which is where we sort of talk about AI. It generated $47 billion of the $60 billion in total revenue uh, for the full year 2023, which is also known as the fiscal year 2024. Um, at $47 billion, its data center business saw 216% growth from the year previous. Uh, so again, a huge segment of the business, and that has changed a fair bit over years gone by. And if we look back to, say, 2017, for example, the business generated 10 times less revenue and gaming was the main revenue driver, which was about $4 billion in revenue. Uh, data center revenue at that time was just a mere $870 million. So we've gone from $870 million in 2017 to $47 billion in 2024. So a huge shift for Jensen Huang and his team. Its other segments are still growing. That's really important to, uh, to sort of mention. We are still seeing growth in the segments of the business, but it's at nowhere near the same pace as the data center business. Um, the gaming uh, center or the gaming business generated 10.4 billion uh, last year, and it serves as sort of the architecture, engineering, and entertainment part of the business, and that generated 1.5 billion. And then we've also got automotive. So working with EVs, that generated just over a billion dollars as well. Uh, after better than expected results in the fourth quarter and stronger than expected guidance, looking ahead, the market now expects NVIDIA to reach 110 billion in revenue for the fiscal year 2025. So the 2024 calendar year, that would be another 80% growth. So the numbers we're talking about here are huge. They are insane numbers, uh, but NVIDIA does have to deliver. Um, you know, that is really important to mention. And we'll sort of go through that throughout the presentation. Big expectations. Um, they need to deliver, but so far they have continued to do that. Uh, we spoke there a lot about revenue and how it makes its money. And as, as we mentioned, sort of mainly coming through that data center business, which is obviously what is powering AI. Um, one of the key numbers to look at for NVIDIA is its earnings growth because shares have soared, as I mentioned, 1900% in the last sort of five years. And as we sort of mentioned at the top of this episode is, is that justified? Can we justify shares moving up 1900%? Well, actually, yes, we can, because its earnings growth has matched that. Since 2016, earnings have grown from a mere 42 cents per share to almost $13 a share uh, in the last fiscal year, which is humongous growth. And if you are watching on the presentation, you can just simply see, you know, the, the size of that chart, the, the huge jump that we saw in 2024. And that is obviously thanks to that huge increase in sales. We had gross margins expanding to 75%. That was up from 60% uh, the year prior. And because its earnings have grown so much, and it is expected to grow by another 90% in the next year to $24 per share in 
per share. So again, we're almost doubling uh, in the next year or so. So those earnings are growing at a superb rate. Its valuation isn't actually that lofty. So, you know, it's not as high as many would have expected. It's trading at about 32 times forward earnings. So if we're putting this simply, NVIDIA's growth has warranted its recent performance. And that's why we're actually seeing it trade at the valuation it is now, because, you know, it is ultimately meeting what the market has expected. And if anything, it's over delivering uh, on, you know, what it has promised. So we're going to have a quick look at some of the competition and challenges for NVIDIA, because it's not all plain sailing. Um, AMD is ultimately seen as the main competition for NVIDIA. AMD provides CPUs and GPUs, which is obviously directly competing with NVIDIA in gaming, data center, and obviously those GPU segments. They offer very similar products, but with different architectures and technologies. Uh, the same goes for Intel as well. Intel has fallen behind slightly against these names over the last couple of years, but it has promised to sort of catch up in the years ahead. So definitely a business that is in the background to keep an eye on as well. We also have the likes of IBM. They are competing with NVIDIA in the AI data center, supercomputing markets. And we've got lots of other semiconductor names as well, NXP, um, you know, massive, massive names that are sort of coming through as well. Indirectly, we have two of the biggest names in the world. We've got Microsoft and Apple. Microsoft announced its first ever custom chips for cloud and AI services. And those chips take a new approach to cloud infrastructure and and may reduce dependency on NVIDIA slightly. Uh, it must be said that they have just recently come out and, uh, and announced a new long-term partnership with NVIDIA as well. Um, but again, you know, as I say, we, we've got to mention it as a threat, but I think the collaborative nature of AI advancement will keep NVIDIA really in that top spot. And I think for now, those names like Microsoft and Apple becoming competitors may be a long way away. Um, you know, the, the reliance on their services may slow down in the future, but for now, it, it doesn't seem that way. Then as some challenges, we have China. I think that's really important to mention. It's a region that NVIDIA has struggled with in recent years, and especially in sort of the year uh, 2023, the full year of 2023, the US curbed exports of some of its chips to the region. And it does account for a sizable portion of revenue. Um, and as I say, it does pose a bit of an ongoing risk for the business if that continues. But NVIDIA has been working on new chips for the Chinese market. Um, and they are ensuring that they are complying with those U.S. export curbs. So they are finding ways around this. They are innovating and they are ensuring uh, that they're, they're not just sort of collapsing under that pressure of those U.S. Uh, export curbs. They are, uh, as I say, sort of moving around that and, and ensuring they can still work with China, which is a very, very key area for them. So a quick look now to some key operating metrics. So the first number to look at is obviously going to be those revenue and net income numbers, two figures that we've sort of gone over already, but they've risen significantly in the last sort of two years. Revenue, as I say, rose to $60 billion. We had net income hitting a massive $30 billion as well. A huge number, um, obviously, as AI continues to generate sort of the, the business, some really, really insane profits. But I want to compare that now to AMD, um, who is, as we sort of mentioned there, probably one of the biggest competitors for NVIDIA. Their revenue was $22 billion, and they only generated $850 million in net income. So a huge difference. Um, you know, we're talking almost $29.5 billion in, in sort of difference there uh, in, in profitability. So really, in terms of where NVIDIA is going, you know, that they have really pushed aside AMD and, and really got a head start on them. And now they have the cash to capitalize, to continue growing, um, to acquire new businesses and, and continue to move from strength to strength. So now a quick look to margins. Obviously, we've got a wealth of very impressive numbers. We've got records, but I'd want to sort of put margins as a bit of a standout as well, because they are the second highest in the industry, uh, and that is just behind that of ARM, which we mentioned earlier, uh, NVIDIA tried to inquire. But the difference is they license chip designs, but they don't sell. So their margins were 93% in Q4 2023. At the same time, NVIDIA's margins stood out um, among 
those elsewhere in the chip sector. It was 72%. To give that some context, Intel uh, was 46%, AMD was 40% in the fourth quarter. So a huge difference um, and well ahead of its competitors. And NVIDIA has sort of really so high because of the high prices the company is able to you know, command for its products due to the complex nature, um, you know, ultimately, and, and just the sheer demand for these products at the moment. Um, NVIDIA did note in in their recent earnings report that may, margins may have sort of hit a peak in the most recent quarter because they had favorable supply costs. But even so, they are still well above every other peer in the sector. But it is quite important to note that if we do see margins come off marginally um, or slightly, um, that that may affect you know that bottom line that may affect that earnings growth we're looking for 90% earnings growth next year so that is something to just keep an eye on uh, and these margins also show nvidia's prime positioning and are indicative that demand is clearly continuing and the good news is that nvidia should be able to continue uh, commanding these premium prices for its chips because of the value that they are bringing to customers right now ai is you know, the boom and it is what everyone sort of wants a piece of at the moment. And therefore people are willing to pay the money for that. So the next point I want to cover is NVIDIA's balance sheets. We're gonna have a look at its debt positioning. Look, it doesn't have a heap of debt and it does have plenty of cash on hand. So that tells us two things. It has the ability to weather any storm if we see a slowdown but it also has the ability to grow as well with so much cash. So it has about 10 billion in liabilities, but around about $43 billion in equity. So it gives it a pretty solid debt, debt to equity ratio of 0.26. So clearly, as I've said there, NVIDIA is not struggling for cash. The good news is that with earnings growing by 500% in the last year, free cash flow grew by 600%. So they are clearly in a position to manage debt very very well as earnings continue to grow as well into the next year during the last three years nvidia generated free cash flow amounting to a very robust 80 percent of its ebit so that's more than you would usually expect and that puts it in a very strong position to pay down debt as it goes on but the business needs to continue this growth and if it doesn't sustain that growth at the market it, you know the market is expecting then the picture of its balance sheet, you know, may change. So that's really important to remember. But for now, you know, the looks of NVIDIA and what it is doing, it's using debt well because it has plenty of cash to to pay off any debt that it has, but it is also using debt as well. It's important to, to sort of use debt to continue expansion, but it also doesn't have too much. It's not paying a lot of money uh, for that debt. You know, we know interest rates are very high at the moment, so it's not having to pay a lot of money in interest. Uh, so on that note, it's a great point just to sort of ask you what you're thinking about NVIDIA. Let me know in the comments if you think NVIDIA will continue to deliver in 2024. It's currently the second best performing stock on the S&P 500. Do we think it gets to number one? Do we think it can, can, can continue to grow these earnings? Let us know what you think. Now we're going to have a look at a simple SWOT analysis for the business. This covers the business's strengths weaknesses opportunities and its threats so the first strength market leadership um, in data center and ai it cemented its position as a clear leader in the data center and, and ai markets its financial strength nvidia's financial performance as we mentioned is a testament to the business its revenue growth is you know second to none uh, and that gross profit as we've mentioned as well really reflects its ability to scale and capitalize on market opportunities as well. And technological innovation. NVIDIA has been at the forefront of innovation for years gone by with the GPU. And with recent growth, it's likely to remain at the forefront of innovation. Weaknesses, there are a few. Um, you may not think it given the growth we've seen, but there is a few. Supply chain concentration, it has had financial success, of course, but it does face some risks associated with supply chains. Most of the company's manufacturing operations are heavily concentrated in Asia Pacific. They rely on foundries such as TSMC and Samsung uh, and 
as some of you may know, there's not always fantastic relationships between the US, you know, and Asia, you know, China, these names. So again, uh, that becomes a weakness in itself. Um, diminishing diversification, you might be thinking, what is that? Well, for years, NVIDIA was a very diversified uh, business across many different industries. But as for now, because its data center business has continued to grow, its other segments has taken a back seat. That puts a heavy reliance on one area of the business. Um, and you know the reason why that's important is because ultimately diversified revenue is really, really important. So to see that change um, in that sort of diversification in the percentages of the business, look, it is a bit of a weakness. We may not see... Uh, it affect the business too much, but I would like to see, you know, a bit of focus back onto sort of gaming and, and seeing some of those percentages level out a little bit. Uh, and third party manufacturing, given that NVIDIA is, is fabulous. So what does that mean? It means that it doesn't make its chips. So as we said, it has to rely on companies such as TSMC. Um, so not only does that include supply chain issues, but it also means there is less control over the process. So quality, um, you know, whatever goes through those chips, they, they sort of can't keep their eyes on it too much. But it also can mean that it can grow costs as well. Um, you know, if you're not making it in-house, if TSMC decides to increase their prices, that is a weakness for the business. Opportunities. Well, there certainly are quite a lot of opportunities for NVIDIA. And obviously, it's going to be AI and large language models. The rise of AI and language models presents a huge opportunity for NVIDIA, they are very well positioned to continue capitalizing on this huge growth in AI, in AI, which is seen as, by some analysts, a trillion dollar market. Um, so new markets as well. So I mentioned a little bit about diversification earlier. I do think it's really important for NVIDIA to sort of continue in the businesses that it has already and not sort of let you know that fall off. So whether that's from working with autonomous vehicles, which it has worked very closely with before, continuing in healthcare, you know, drug discovery, financial services. I think there are plenty of areas that NVIDIA can explore, you know, outside of its current realm and diversify its customer base. And I think that's really, really important is making sure we have a diverse customer base and acquisitions, a huge opportunity for NVIDIA because, you know, they're growing, they're expanding. Uh, and this is a great way to continue doing that. We mentioned that acquisition of ARM earlier that didn't go through, but I think an acquisition could be another step for NVIDIA, um, especially with so much cash on hand. Threats, um, intensifying competition, the market for GPUs and AI uh, is highly competitive. We went through some of the competitors earlier. We've got a lot of technological uh, technological changes and we've got a lot of evolving industry standards as well. So NVIDIA have got to stay at the top of their game um, when it comes to, you know, sort of batting off competition, because if they don't, then there's a lot of competitors ready to pounce. Uh, regulatory and geopolitical risks. Uh, NVIDIA's operations are subject to a lot of laws, rules, regulations, which can have an impact on the business. We mentioned uh, those export curbs to China. We mentioned the regulatory crackdown from that acquisition of ARM. So again, you know, they do have a, you know, quite a few risks there from regulatory and geopolitical uh, sort of side of things. And finally, customers turning into competitors. Uh, I sort of did mention this a little bit earlier, but if companies such as Microsoft do choose to sort of make their chips in-house and they do sort of look to skip past NVIDIA in the future, you know, it definitely will be a worry uh, for the business as time goes on, especially if the need you know, for large language models does start to sort of slow down, right? If we're seeing, you know, what we're seeing at the moment is the need for huge data center power to train these AI models. If the need to sort of, you know, once we have trained these AI models, the need for that same computing power may slow down and we may not see Microsoft, you know, turning to NVIDIA as much in the future. So now to an important point, we're going to look at the potential valuation of the business. So in the guru focus tracker that you can see on the left, it takes into account historical multiples. We've got PE ratio, price to sales ratio, price to book ratio, and price to free cash flow. Uh, and currently it sees the stock as modestly overvalued. But I think the big question is whether the outlook for the business can justify the valuation. I think one thing to note 
is it's unlikely to be a winner takes all sector when it comes to AI. But investors are clearly pricing the growth in AI when it comes to this business. And I think that is altering what we've seen in terms of evaluation. We mentioned the price to earnings ratio a little bit earlier. It's trading at around about 32 forward earnings, which is not cheap, but it certainly isn't crazy. And, and this is actually fallen pretty significantly, even as shares have grown. So because profit is actually surging at the same rate, what we've actually seen is we've seen the price to earnings ratio of NVIDIA come down, um, even as the share price has gone up at the same time. So that is a slightly a touch above Intel's forward price to earnings of 32 times. But Intel's share price has moved nowhere near at the same rate that NVIDIA has over the last five years. It's not even a comparison. Uh, and the the um and, and to compare that to AMD's, well, AMD's forward price to earnings ratio is about 48 times. And that is because they're not delivering at the same rate as NVIDIA is right now. So I think it's really difficult to say that NVIDIA is overvalued with significant growth on the horizon. And I would say that it seems sort of reasonably priced, if anything, maybe slightly on the expensive side. But in most cases, investors are willing to pay a little bit extra when it comes to growth. And any stock that rocketed, you know, 600% in a little over a year, you know, is bound to see, you know, a bit of a slowdown in, you know, the, the growth of, of shares. But for, for analysts, they still love the stock. Um, there's still a resounding buy on the stock as well. They do see limited upside, though. There's a target of about 900 bucks on the stock, and that is just because we've seen so much upside already. So, again, I think the, the stock is fairly valued, you know, as it is, especially with that growth. But the big risk does come is if it doesn't meet the expectations that is it, that it is expecting. That's when we could really see shares come under pressure. So every earnings report over the next year is going to be crucial. But if it does deliver, there's no reason why this share price can't keep moving to the upside. So now here are my key points to watch for the business moving forward. So firstly, opportunity. Uh, AI growth has just got started. AI growth is, is just getting started. And this is a technology revolution that has huge upside, as I said earlier, with a trillion dollar AI market opportunity over the next few years. Not all companies will win and some will hype themselves as AI plays. And if they do not deliver the results over the coming quarters, Investors will exit and quickly head for the elevators. You've got to talk the talk, and now you've got to walk the walk. But NVIDIA is so far doing that. Uh, and if they continue to do that, as I say, the share price will have further upside. Another opportunity, I mentioned it earlier, more industries and healthcare. Um, NVIDIA has already started working with new industries. Healthcare isn't new. It's been in it for many, many years, but it is seen by most analysts as very key to future success. NVIDIA has what we see as a significant opportunity to leverage AI across healthcare verticals, including drug discovery, medical devices, and imaging. Um, and I think that's going to be really important for the business moving forward. Uh, risks, of course, is competition in the market. You know, ultimately, we could see competition mount up. You know, AMD, they've invested considerably to sort of catch up. We've got big tech players, Google, Microsoft, Amazon. They're doubling down, as we've mentioned already. Um, but I think the, the biggest sort of threat that I think I see from video at the moment is that in the fiscal year 24, the company indicated that one single customer, which wasn't actually named, accounted for about 13% of its overall revenue. That is a huge weight to one single customer. And that's why I mentioned about its diversification earlier and it being a slight worry. If that customer chooses to go elsewhere, if it chooses to begin, you know, creating more chips in-house, whatever it may be, you know, that is a huge loss of revenue for NVIDIA. We also mentioned about GPUs already. Um, I mentioned about sort of the large AI language models. If the training of these models you know, does begin to slow down and we need lower power requirements, um, then that could significantly reduce the demand for GPUs as well. And finally, again, we've already slightly covered it, but geopolitics, NVIDIA is not immune to the geopolitics of the chip business. Given the strategic importance of AI, 
you know, the US government has been regulating the sales of key products to China, the Middle East and other countries. And as I say, NVIDIA has designed chips to work around these rules, but further regulations could affect the business and geopolitical issues could continue to disrupt supply chains. You know, at the moment, NVIDIA's GPU is almost entirely reliant on Taiwan Semiconductor. Um, and Taiwan has faced mounting tensions in recent years with China, which has been asserting that Taiwan is part of its territory. So again, huge, huge geopolitical tensions. And that is definitely something to consider when NVIDIA, when investing in NVIDIA. So to cap us off a nice summary, shares have had a great 12 months. They've surged by more than 270%, leaving limited room to the upside, which begs the question how much further to go. Well, if it can continue to grow earnings, then we may see further upside. Its earnings growth is second to none, and it is the reason we've seen shares rally so hard uh, within the last year. But there are risks. It's really important to remember there are risks because there are geopolitics, there are supply chains, there's competition, and that heavy reliance, as I mentioned, on big customers. Um, finally, its forward price to earnings at 35 times is reasonable given the expected growth we're expected to see, but it's only if it pulls it off, it has to deliver. Um, so if you are paying 35 times earnings for a business, you're expecting it to grow. And if it doesn't grow at that same rate, then shares will certainly come under pressure. So that's why this year is a big year for the business. And of course, finally, I said it earlier, but analysts do like the company. They still do have a strong buy consensus out for NVIDIA. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening. If you found this episode useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to continue seeing more stock breaks. Let me know if you think NVIDIA will keep taking off in 2024. And if it's a stock you have on your watch list, a reminder to let us know in the comments if there's a stock you are interested in and we'll break it down. Thanks very much for listening. See you next time.